Howdy everyone, Chris here. Welcome to Xenomatic Gaming. You know the deal by now. I regularly talk about single-player RPGs. Today, I am bringing you some huge news about Avowed. Obsidian's next big RPG set in the Pillars of Eternity universe. I'm really excited about this video after what we saw at the recent GamesCon showcase. Fair to say, all of us waited for the reveal for a very long time, and I think it was worth the wait, because they dropped some very, very cool stuff. Let's start with the most important reveal, the game's timeline. They confirmed that Avowed actually takes place after Pillars of Eternity 2, so it's confirmed. No more speculations. They talked a lot about the god Eothus and the events at Ukaizo, which formed the endgame for Pillars of Eternity 2. So... We now know that this game happens afterwards, and we even saw some of the ramifications from it in the quest they did. We also saw the introduction of a new godlike. Now for those unaware, godlike are effectively like divine children. They are beings that are thought to be blessed by the gods before birth, while far less common than the other races due to their rarity and inability to reproduce, godlikes exist throughout Eora, albeit in low numbers. Depending on the social view of the culture they are born to, godlikes are often either glorified as a physical embodiment of a god or shunned and outcast as an abomination. Each godlike has a unique chime within their souls, and that effectively turns them into a representation of individual gods. And here we see a godlike of Eothus. Notably, Eothus is the god of rebirth. This is a huge deal because of the impact that Aeothus had on the entire world at the end of Pillars of Eternity 2. Some minor spoilers for Pillars 2 here. Aeothus halted the cycle of rebirth and reincarnation by destroying the machinery that was controlling the process or guiding the flow of it. Aeothus, in an effort to diminish the role of the gods and elevate Kith, destroyed the machinery in Yukaizo. He did this because the entirety of it was built on a lie that you uncover over the story of those games. Souls from newly deceased now pool in the in-between, unable to pass to the beyond and to new births. But the big thing here is that this simply had earth-shattering levels of implication, as you can imagine. The fact that Avowed is not only set after that, but appears to be directly dealing with the consequences, takes it to a whole new level story-wise. As a Pillars of Eternity fan, this obviously excites me a lot. Play the Pillars games, really. Give them some time at the start. While you don't need to play them to play Avowed, you won't regret it. Apart from that huge reveal, they also showcased a lot of gameplay. This gameplay showcase is effectively a quest towards the beginning of the game that they describe as the first dungeon. Some context here if you didn't watch it. We are there looking for a missing expedition, which is why we are interacting with the Oracle here, or the godlike of Eothus. They used this initial conversation to explain some things. For starters, we see that arcane scholar tag in dialogue. This is actually one of the five available backgrounds for our character. And at the very least, they're going to be shaping dialogue decisions. They also highlighted some of their dialogue system. There's a lot to know about the world setting of these games. Even though I have replayed the games many times, I don't know half of it. And I don't pronounce hardly any of the words right. So their dialogue system aims to tackle that by using a sort of just highlight word systems, which was also present in Pillars of Eternity games. Even Tyranny. Another brilliant CRPG made by Obsidian. They should make a sequel to that. If you encounter anything you're unfamiliar with, you can highlight it in dialogue and bring up descriptions and explanations of what things are. They can share that for the people who need to know what it is, without making conversations excessively wordy as a result of having to explain all of that. Let's talk a bit about the mechanics and environmental interactions. Another thing we see in dialogue and attribute-based skill checks, based on might or an intellect. These will pop up in conversation and give you different options, in addition to your backgrounds as well. From there, as they started moving through the dungeon, they explained some of the interactions we can expect along the way. There will be interactables within the environment, things we can break down with a sword. They have confirmed the existence of grenades and environmental objects that are affected by them. Regardless of how you build your character, 
we can throw grenades, which is good, because I like throwing grenades and being a menace. In regards to the environmental interactions, we actually hear the Oracle specifically comment on us interacting with them, which makes me wonder if that was a scripted moment, or if there will be regular occurrences of things like that happening. They also explain that they have built a lot of their spaces to be very vertical in nature, utilizing the 3D space. They wanted upward movement to be a big thing, so they can make use of their parkour system, as they call it. We all love verticality in games, so this is a welcome addition. Another thing they showed in the environment were puzzles where you have to lift up gates and things by interacting with what they referred to as essence generators. As far as I understood, you charge these generators with electricity from their example, and they will, of course, move the environment in some way and allow you to pass. Basically small puzzles that you can sort out. I don't know. Maybe it's a good thing. Personally, I don't like puzzles, but it doesn't really matter. We also got a good look at the UI and things like attributes, the inventory, and some more of the skill trees in particular. On the attribute side of things, it does confirm that this is a big RPG alongside what they showed in combat as well. Now, while this is an RPG in first or third person, it's still going to have a lot of stats and numbers behind the new combat. As a result, it's not exactly going to be your action-adventure game combat type deal. We got some looks at the wizard one in particular because that's what they were playing, and they showed off some examples of abilities and how they've weaved them into the tree. We already know from previous reveals they are taking all of the classes from Pillars of Eternity and kind of rolling them into more streamlined roles. While there won't be as many classes to choose from, it does look from this skill tree that they're trying to pull a lot of that stuff in as much as they can. They gave examples of specific abilities for the showcase that they were using, including an interaction with a passive ability called Blood Magic that allows you to siphon your own health to fuel spells if you're out of your spell resource. But they had that in combination with a spell that also gave them life back, so it was draining health from the enemies to recharge your own. We also got a good look at a lot of animations in combat for those abilities I talked about, which does look promising, but there are other skills and abilities in their animations, so we will have to wait. I think we can guess the sort of animations we'll get in the Obsidian game, though. That being said, I love the combat and how it looks in the Pillars games, but especially this one. Especially the elemental spells, and all the AoE animations look really cool. They explained that it was in first and third person as it was revealed recently, but they also mentioned that the weight system would affect combat. That sounds interesting, specifically the weight system being in place will probably affect dodging, rolling, and disengagements. It also makes light and heavy armor builds vastly different and important. When the first gameplay was released, combat received a lot of criticism. The combat does seem more fluid here. It's pretty much common knowledge among Obsidian faithfuls that it won't be a buttery smooth experience, and that's not why we are here anyway. But it does look like it will offer plenty of depth, especially when factoring in the skill trees and various abilities. Personally, being a fan of the genre and setting of the game, the confirmation of its timeline, the deeper dive into the gameplay mechanics, I'm super excited. Let me know in the comments what you think. If you're just as hyped for Avowed as I am, do you think Obsidian will pull off another cult classic? Or they will finally break into that mainstream success? Let's discuss. Subscribe for more deep dives into the latest RPGs. If you enjoyed the vibe, make sure to click that like button, as it helps a lot. Thanks for watching, and see you soon.